Most of us probably have stretch marks already. If you don't, we may need to welcome you to the club soon. There are so many products on the market that are promising you the world. They're gonna get rid of your stretch marks. They're gonna prevent you ever getting them. In this video, we're going to be talking about what are stretch marks? Why do they form? Who's more prone to getting stretch marks? Can you prevent them? And what can you do to treat them? I'll tell you what your best options are. So clinic treatments, home treatments. And then as always, I'll tell you when to see your doctor. Hi ladies, I'm Dr. Simi, former surgeon, current GP and cosmetic doctor. Welcome to my channel where we discuss all things skin and women's health. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about stretch marks, medically known as striae distensi. Stretch marks are super common and they are completely normal. I've got stretch marks. I do have stretch marks. <laughs> where? What do you mean where? <laughs> Let me just... I've got stretch marks everywhere. No, I've got them on my tummy, hips, breasts. Yeah, I've got them in most places. If we take a closer look at the structure of the skin, it's got three layers. The stretch marks are a form of scar that forms in the dermis, which is the middle portion of the skin. In the dermis, you've got cells called fibroblasts and these cells produce collagen and elastin. So if you think of collagen as like your scaffolding, it gives the skin the strength and the support. Elastin, however, you want to think of like an elastic band. It gives the skin elasticity, which means the ability to stretch and then to recoil and snap back into shape. So in situations where the skin needs to stretch really quickly. The collagen fibers are kind of stretched apart, the elastin fibers rupture and you get a stretch mark. You might have seen in different places there are two types of stretch marks, red and white. It's not that there are two different types of stretch marks but these red and white stretch marks just represent different phases of the same process. In the early stages when a stretch mark first develops it can look red or pink or purple. If you've got darker skin type then you might not see that redness, you might see it more as looking like a darker brown or a reddy brown. When stretch marks are at this stage, they can be quite itchy. A stretch mark that's in this red phase is much more likely to respond to treatment. So if you're going to treat your stretch marks, this is the stage that you want to catch them at so that you get a better chance of fading them. After a few months to years, the stretch marks then flatten. They can become hypopigmented, so they're a lighter colour than the surrounding skin. And they also have a little bit of a depression. So if you run your finger over the surface, you can feel that it's slightly dipped in. And the texture on the surface of the stretch mark also looks a little bit wrinkly and it's atrophic or thinned out. Stretch marks at this stage are mature. They can look silvery, white, a very pale brown. And they tend to be asymptomatic here. So the itching tends to have stopped. They don't really cause any problems and people just tend not to like the look of them. I fall into the camp of not giving a toss. They don't bother me. I've never heard of this. You've never heard of I don't give a toss? No. I don't give a toss. That means I don't care. Is that a British thing? If you say that you do not give a toss about someone or something, you are emphasizing that you do not care about them at all. So why do we form stretch marks in the first place? It's a combination of genetics. So if somebody in your family has got stretch marks, then you are much more likely to get stretch marks. It's also a combination of your hormones because there are certain hormones that make conditions in the skin more favorable to developing stretch marks. If you are female, if you are on certain medication, for example, steroid creams, tablets, or steroid injections, and also certain medical conditions increase your chances of getting stretch marks. And then finally, you need that trigger which is the stretch of the skin which causes the collagen and the elastin fibers to snap. This can happen in puberty when you have a growth spurt. Also in situations where you gain weight suddenly so this could be in the form of fat or of muscle for example if you are weight training. In pregnancy you're more likely to develop stretch marks. This is happening because the uterus is growing quickly in size and of course there's also the weight gain which is also stretching the skin. Another time where you can see stretch marks is after breast implant surgery where the skin has to stretch to accommodate the implant. I commonly see stretch marks that are quite severe in people that are using skin bleaching creams that you know you can get kind of under the counter that are sold maybe illegally. You know the ones that have no labels because the ingredients are secret naturally and also they are organic. So these bleaching creams often contain really potent steroids. They also weaken the collagen and the elastin fibers in the skin and they make you much more prone to getting stretch marks. If you don't like stretch marks, and you want to do something about them, you have three options. The best option or the most effective option is also the most expensive and that's your professional clinic treatments. If you're on a budget, then you can go for creams and lotions, which is actually the most popular option. And then your third option is 
do nothing. Leave them alone, embrace them because they will naturally fade with time. If you are going down the option of using creams and lotions, there are only really two ingredients that have been shown to improve the appearance of stretch marks and they are tretinoin and hyaluronic acid. So tretinoin, which is otherwise known as retinoic acid, is a form of vitamin A which is applied to the skin and vitamin A helps to stimulate your fibroblast to produce collagen and elastin. So you get the best result if you start using this early on so at the stage when the stretch marks are still looking pink or red or dark brown retinoids can be drying on the skin they can cause irritation so you may have to kind of build up how often you're using it until your skin tolerates it and also you should avoid retinoids in pregnancy and you can buy topical retinoids over the counter such as retinol but it just might take longer for you to see the results. Hyaluronic acid is a sugar molecule that's naturally found in our skin and it's thought that it works by encouraging collagen production. So if you're going to go with kind of creams or lotions you really want to be looking out for these two ingredients in the products that you're choosing. Professional clinic treatments. So these are treatments that you get in a clinic that's done by a doctor or a dermatologist or aestheticians and there are quite a few options for these. So you've got chemical peels where we apply skincare acids to the skin to stimulate the cell to turn over and also to stimulate collagen and elastin production in the skin. We've also got microneedling where we use tiny needles to create controlled injury to the skin. The skin then thinks to itself, oh, I need to repair myself and it will do this by producing collagen and elastin which improves the appearance of the stretch marks. The radio frequency devices use energy waves that heat up the dermis stimulate the fibroblasts and they do this without damaging the epidermis. You've got combined radio frequency and microneedling devices which give you kind of a more enhanced effect. Then you've got ultrasound which is similar to radio frequency but rather than using radio waves it uses sound waves to get a similar effect. And then you've also got lasers. Ablative lasers destroy the epidermis. For example the CO2 laser. The other type of laser that's commonly used are non-ablative lasers. So these are lasers that keep the epidermis intact. For example, the pulsed dye laser. Sometimes it's referred to as a vascular laser and this is because it targets blood vessels. So this means that it can help to improve stretch marks that have that redness. So when they are in the early phase. Other options include microdermabrasion. This is a skin resurfacing technique where tiny crystals are used to rub off the topmost layer of the skin and it's been shown that this can help to fade stretch marks because it can help to increase the collagen and the elastin in the skin. Then we've got PRP or platelet rich plasma. So you might have seen a lot of celebrities using this. They're sometimes called vampire facials and this is because it's a treatment that uses your own blood which is kind of spun down in a machine and then the plasma part of the blood is extracted. This part is rich in platelets. Now this plasma can then be injected into the skin or micro needled into the skin and these platelets release growth factors which stimulate the skin to regenerate and to repair itself. And then you've also got the option of collagen stimulating agents or fillers. These are injected into the skin. They stimulate the fibroblasts and stimulate collagen and elastic production. So to increase your chances of getting a good result of fading these stretch marks, start treating the stretch marks as soon as you see them appearing. Also studies have shown that the action of massaging the creams into the stretch marks is actually beneficial and then finally you should have patience. The process of your skin producing collagen doesn't happen overnight. It's something that takes time. You're looking at about three to six months. So you really need to be kind of diligent and consistent and patient to give your skin the time to produce the collagen and the elastin and to give time for the stretch marks to fade. So now we've talked about treatment, let's move on to prevention. It's not always possible to prevent the stretch marks coming, but there are things that you can do to reduce your chances of getting them. Try to maintain a healthy weight. If you are going to lose or gain weight it's better to do this slowly because it gives the skin time to accommodate um, and those collagen and elastin fibers are less likely to get disrupted because the skin's not stretching so quickly. Centella asiatica which is a herb that's thought to work by increasing collagen and elastin has been shown to help. If you choose products containing this again it's worth spending some time massaging this ingredient properly into the skin. Okay so when to see your doctor. If you have stretch marks 
that are particularly large or prominent. And then at the same time, you're noticing that you're gaining weight around your trunk, so kind of your chest and your tummy area, but you have slim arms and legs, or you're noticing that you're getting a buildup of fat kind of across the back or across the shoulders. If you are bruising easily, if your face is looking round, puffy and red, and these are all potential signs of Cushing syndrome. So Cushing syndrome is a condition that's caused by having too much cortisol in the body. And often it's caused by taking long-term steroids. So whether that's injections, tablets, or using cream. And that's because steroids contain a form of synthetic cortisol. Very rarely the excess cortisol can be produced by tumors. But if you're noticing any of these signs or symptoms, then it's a really good idea to see your doctor so that you can have a full assessment. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you found it helpful and if you know someone that could benefit then please do share it.